mortgage rates drop, the fascist chips bill, the market continues to go up. What? News of the day for July 29, 2022. I'm not sure I'm going to do news of the day every day. I'm just not that disciplined to stay focused on one thing and one thing only. But when I'm reading some articles, it makes me kind of chuckle and it actually frustrates me. But anyway, all right, so we're seeing a decline in mortgage rates. Let me just show you. Uh, remember, mortgage rates, you don't really look at the mortgage rates on it as you always look at the 10 year as your proxy for bonds, all right? Um, always look at the 10 year. And what we're going to see here, let me show you. There's a three month 10 year bond, and that's the yield 2.681. Here, my wife just texted me. So the mortgage rates, you don't look at them, you don't look at the mortgage rates relative to the 30 year treasury. That don't make any sense because most people turn their mortgage, very few mortgages are held for 30 years. So let's just put it that way. Uh, so you look at it for the 10-year. The 10-year treasury is a better proxy for what's happening in the mortgage interest rate market. And what you're going to see here, again, on the 10-year treasury, just to show you again, you'll see that, oops, hold on a second, you'll see that sudden rise there. And that's where, the, I mean, look at that. We've never seen an increase like that so fast. It's never happened before, percentage-wise. I mean, I'm not just talking, I'm literally talking from, from X to why we've never seen an increase that fast and percentage wise. It's nuts actually, when you think about it. So, you know, the 10 year treasury and uh, let's see here, was down to 2.73, 2.74 in May, and it went up to 3.43. That's a 70 basis point increase, literally in what, two weeks, three weeks. So 0.7 divided by 2.7, that's a 26% increase. I mean, almost literally overnight, it's crazy. Um, and if you look at the course of, say, look, I mean, we've never seen that kind of rise. All right. Now, what's happening now is everyone in their mom says, oh, my goodness, the interest rates are going up. Because I, the Fed just raised another 75 basis points, so I better react. Too late, sucker. Too late. You can't do that. You can't do this. this is what makes the market so, I mean, look, I don't buy any of this efficient market theory and all that stuff. I think it's stupid. But I do think the markets are pretty doggone smart. Because the collective brain power of everybody is what the markets are. It's kind of like the real clear politics poll. So if you look at the CNBC poll or, I don't know, the Washington Post poll, they're all stupid, man. But if you look at them in the aggregate, they're pretty spot on. You look at the Rasmus and the Trafalgar, whatever it's called, plus the uh, Monmouth, which is left-wing poll, CNN's left-wing poll. And you combine in the aggregate, and that's, that's a pretty good uh, place to be in terms of what the aggregate poll is. And the market is an aggregate thought process of everyone, all the participants in it. When you take the aggregate of everybody, that's that's the market. And it's, it's incredibly efficient. Again, efficient market is different. Um, efficient market hypothesis, uh, the front, I forgot the efficient frontier model. I forgot what that's called. Uh, but anyway, all that stuff's dumb. But the, but the market and in terms of the prediction ability of saying three to six months, this is our expectation. It's actually pretty spot on. Anyway, so what happens is the Fed raises... They raise again. They raise 75. They raise another 75. All that's been priced into this, man. All that's been priced into it. All right. So you don't move when the Fed acts. You move three to six months before that, which is what the markets do. So if you're moving now on the anticipation of rates going up and bond prices falling, you're missing. You just don't do that, man. The, that's, the ship has already sailed. All right, so now what we're seeing is we're seeing a slowing in the economy, recession, literally recession. And the, again, that's frustrating. We know when that economists don't want to say this, but it is a recession. So we're seeing a slowing in the economy. All right, what happens when you have a slowing of the economy? Do the Fed continue to raise? Well, that'd be stupid, again, because some people do borrow money. Uh, a lot of us don't. We don't want to continue to borrow, but some people do. Some businesses in particular need to borrow money. And so when you're raising short-term rates, that hurts the business's bottom line. It, it, it does. And so that will have an impact, not as much as I think a lot of people think, but it still it could hurt some businesses on the fringe that are, are heavy in debtors uh, with their, um, their short-term money that they need, um, literally. I mean, you think about it. When I was, when I was in uh, banking, you had these, uh, what are those things called? Like a credit line, a cash management. I forgot, but short-term liquidity needs. I'm drawing a blank what they were. But anyway, you had to turn for them, but you lend them, and that was based on short-term interest rates. And if short-term interest rates are sky high now, uh, that does affect cash flow. Just a fact, man. And that can hurt businesses because, like, oh, man, I need this short-term money to do, you know, it's like a bridge loan when you're doing construction, like a construction loan. 
when I was in banking, we used to do these construction loans. We'd come a bridge loan to get the freaking building built, and then we'd do a 30-year uh, mortgage on that on that new building. But you'd always do it with a short-term loan just to get the thing done. Pain in the ass, man. I'm not gonna lie to you. You do these, <laughs> you do these draws. You know, sixteen thousand, twenty-eight thousand. Oh, I hated that crap because you'd have to validate that the uh, the draw was legit, and you have to go to the site to make sure that it was. They're literally putting the roof on, not smoking dope. All right. So anyway, so now we got the interest rates are going down, and that is leading to a decline in mortgage rates. So remember, most mortgages, the vast majority, don't stick for thirty years. The vast majority are probably five to seven, frankly which is why the 10 year is your proxy. And as the 10 year drops, oh, mortgage rates pulled back this week to drop to 5.3%. In spite of the Fed's three quarter uh, point interest rate increase, the average rate for 30 year uh, fell to 5.3 from 5.54. And I think the highest it was hit 6% at one point. Hold on a second. So we're seeing a, a pretty significant pullback in mortgage rates. And uh, will that continue? Probably not so much. Uh, I, wouldn't, I mean, I think you probably see mortgage rates below five on a 30-year fix within the year, but uh, probably not much lower than that. But I mean, I could be wrong there. Anyway, the likelihood of the interest rates going up are pretty low. Uh, but anything could happen. Anyway, point being is th this is not indicative of a, a bubble because people are being priced out of the market. Like on the real estate side, like everyone is saying, oh, my goodness, people are being priced out of the market. They can't afford it. Another thing with mortgage rates, you always got to remember points of 15 year versus the 30 and arm and all that. So you can't just look at the proxy of the 30 year and say, well, what does that mean? You got to just look a little bit deeper. Either way, I, don't, I mean, you can look at mortgage rates, but I just look at the 10 year treasury. The 10 year treasury is always the proxy for interest rates. And again, that is the 10 year treasury. All right, so it's shrinking, and I imagine it'll probably continue to shrink a little bit. I, I don't think we're going to go back to where we were, uh, you know, one and a half. That, I, don't, I don't see that happening, but, uh, but anything could happen, man. I mean, my goodness. Um, all right, so now we got it. Let's talk. So the point being, don't just, if you're, if you're moving based on actions that people are doing today, you're being Jerome Powell, Sniffy Joe, I don't care. You're too late, man. You move, you just, you're too late. I cannot stress this enough. Don't do that. Don't move, frankly. When I say move, it, you know, re, you know, configure your portfolio and all that. Just don't do that. Like I had my lady email me the other day, kind of in a, somewhat of a panic. Should we do something? I'm like, you're, no, no, don't do something now. Wait, because the, the pain has already happened, if that makes sense. I mean, just think about it. What has the market done? All right, I just, oh man, it just, it, it pains me then that but people don't get this. And it's okay for you not to get this. That's why you're here for me to tell you how this works. I'm not saying, I don't have a freaking, you know, I'm not a scientist. I'm a scientist, hell, who, scientist, whoa. I'm not, you know, I, I don't know anything. What I'm just saying is, this is what people were doing. They were selling. All right, so let me get my, right here. Let's see if I can make that bigger. So people are getting real nervous right there. And look what they missed. So, you know, the S&P 500 is up since it's the, the fall. It's now at 44,072. So we take 4,072, subtract by 3636, divide by, it's 436. 436 divided by 3636 is up by 12%. I mean, so if you were freaking out back in, that was just in the, the latter, the beginning of June, you can't do that. You can't do that. That's why the barbell. All right. Anyway, so now we got, um, I want to talk about the fascist, uh, the chips thing. This freaking ticks me off. I'm not going to lie to you. This really, it's just the same story every time. And it's it, Republicans and Democrats, it matters not. How many Republicans jumped on board with this too? I don't know. Uh, but let's see here. The chips thing, uh, eye on China, the China competition bill. Members of the House of Representatives have voted 243 to 187 to send $280 billion Chips and Science Act to Biden. $280 flipping billion. Where does that money come from? Are we running surpluses? No. The bill. So, do you literally think we're ever going to pay off the debt in the United States government? You're not, we're not going to, man. It's not going to happen. So, stop with this idea that we got to pay off debt. It's not. It's, not, it's just. It's not going to happen. 
we have deficits as far as the eye can see, which already add to the debt we've already accumulated. Are we recording now? Okay, good. All right. The bill which aims to make the U.S. more competitive with China will provide $52 billion in subsidies for domestic chip makers and more than $100 billion in tech and science investments. So let me ask you a question. Why is this fascist? If you're a tinkerer in your garage, how do you get access to that money? Oh, oh, you got to hire a freaking team of accountants and attorneys and people who bankers who know how to have access to it. You can't just go to the freaking Department of uh, Energy or whatever the hell, Department of Commerce and say, hey, I'm a tinker, a chip maker. Can you uh, send me a check for, you know, 200,000 bucks? It doesn't work like that. In fact, I was watching me and Liam and my his two sons were watching an episode of The Office the other day. And uh, it was in 2008 or nine where they're talking about uh, if you hire a convict, you get some money from the federal government. And <laughs> it's funny. It's such a funny episode. It's a black guy is a convict, and Michael, you know, Michael Scott's like, why does it have to be the black guy? It's just funny as hell. Anyway, point being is uh, Jan, who's Michael's boss, uh, said, hey, this is great work, not by Michael, but one of Michael's competitors in a branch. He says he was able to fill the paperwork to get a, a check from the government for us to hire a convict. And I was like, this is it's just... So how does a tinkerer, an entrepreneur in his garage, as FDR, not FDR, as Eisenhower talked about, how does he get access to that money? Oh, it's too bad, so sad. He got to hire a team of accountants and attorneys and bankers. So who gets the money? Intel. Oh, it's insane. lo and behold. And literally in the same thing, the same email from Alpha, Seeking Alpha, Intel cuts spending near term as chip giant sees PC weakness. How much cash does freaking Intel have? Let's take a look, shall we? Well, according to Macro Trends, they have $38 billion of cash money. $38 billion of cash. How much are they going to get from the chips bill? I bet Intel stocks freaking. I bet the futures are up on Intel stock. Maybe that was yesterday. Let's take a look what Intel stock did yesterday. INT, the whole thing's so freaking corrupt, man. INTC, let's take a gander. Man, that might. The more I wear my reading glasses, the more I need to wear them. It's almost like they uh, do that deliberately. Oh, let's see. Intel. Well, oh, yeah, it was up yesterday. Was it up big time? Oh, no, it wasn't up yesterday. It was down 47 cents. Oh, that's crazy. But, oh, but look at this. It dropped. You see a big drop right there? And then it came up. <laughs> I'm sure that's when Snippy Joe signed it. Yeah, amazing. All right. So there you go, my friends. There you go. Good times had by all. Frustrating no end. Economists don't want to call it a recession because it's not a recession until the MBER. This is what their their argument is. Well, we can't have a recession if we have jobs that are low. It's the whole thing just freaking infuriates me. Um, what else? We got the chips bill. Oh, let's just read what Eisenhower said. Hold on a second. I'm actually the biggest fan of Eisenhower. I like how he sent uh, people to uh, protect uh, little black people, little black girls in particular. Uh, black children from going to schools in Arkansas. That, that's the right move. Um, but I'm not the biggest fan on, on Eisenhower as a president. That's for doggone sure. But that was that was a good move to protect kids who were uh, being ab for, uh, abused. And the state wasn't doing anything about it. You can't have your civil rights abused, man. And if you do, then the state needs to step in. That's just a fact. Uh, the government, the feds need to step in. If the state is abusing you, you need the federal government to step in. All right, so here's Eisenhower. All right, akin and largely responsible for the sweeping changes in our industrial military posture. Ah, ding, 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 military, military industrial complex. And there it is. In the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought by the military industrial complex. Could the whole nuclear arms race, hmm, could that have anything to do with the military industrial complex? Have you ever thought, what if that was all? fake you ever thought about that what if it's all fake what if the nuclear race was just to scare you to send all kinds of money to perpetuate the military industrial complex because it's done great has it not it's done great to put people in fear and to spend a hell of a lot of money on defense defense as we're bombing libya somalia hmm. yep i'm just thinking out loud here what if this was all fake if you actually look and you actually read more about not just the mainstream, but you read more about the the inconsistencies, shall we say, Hiroshima 
in Nagasaki, start saying, huh, hmm, things made you go, hmm, well, I guess I'm Chomsky. All right, anyway, uh, akin to and largely responsible for the sweeping changes in the military-industrial complex has been the technological revolution during recent decades. In this, revolu in this revolution, research has become central. It has also become more formalized, complex, and costly. A steadily increasing share is conducted for and by the direction of the federal government, the CHIPS Act. Today, the solitary inventor tinkering in his shop has been overshadowed by task forces of scientists in the laboratories and testing fields. Are they even in the testing fields anymore? They're Big Dwight. In the same fashion, the free university, historically the fountainhead of free ideas and scientific discovery, or is it free anymore? Do we have free ideas in a free university? No has experienced a revolution in the conduct of research, partly because of the huge costs involved. Uh, a government contract becomes virtually a substitute for intellectual curiosity. For every old blackboard, there are now hundreds of new electronic computers. The prospect of domination of the nature, nation's scholars by federal employment, project allocations, and the power of money is ever present and gravely to be regarded. Yet, in holding a scientific re research and discovery in respect, we should and must be alert to the equal and opposite danger that public policy be could become the captive of a scientific technological elite. Yeah. And it, it is a task of statesmanship to mold, to balance, and, and, and integer, integrate these and other forces new and old within the principles of our democratic system, ever aiming towards the, new supreme, the supreme goals of our free society. That's not happening in the chips thing because it's all going to Intel and whatever the big micron strategy. I don't know what it was. I just don't care. Um, it's, it's The whole idea is so freaking stupid, man. It's just a way for the people to say, hey, you gave the military bailout. You gave the banks bailout. You gave the airlines bailouts. Now we want our bailouts. It's just it's, it's bad. It's 101. All right. Love your thoughts. We'll see you.